we have an assembly member Nazirian. Item number eight, but before, why don't we, if somebody can move the consent calendar. Uh, boy, Senator Pan moves the consent calendar. <laughs> the great doctor's on fire today. <laughs> consent calendar, item number two, AB 72, and number seven, AB 366. Call the members, please. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn? Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Mitchell? Monning? Monning I Nielsen, aye. Nielsen I Pan, aye. Pan I Roth, Wolk, aye. Wolk I. Currently has six, enough to, to get out. We're going to place that on call as well. Again, now to item number eight, AB 374, Nazarian Healthcare Coverage Prescription Drugs. Good afternoon, Assembly Member. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and, and uh, members. Um, as you all know, uh, over 16 million Californians. Uh, suffer uh, with chronic conditions um, and uh, uh, our health plans are also impacted along with our insurers. Uh, and so unfortunately a, a step therapy protocol has to be put into place uh, to force patients to fail first on several alternative medications before they are permitted to obtain the medication deemed appropriate. Um, anecdotal data shows that plans may require a patient to fail up to five different, uh, try up to five different medications before receiving access to the medication prescribed. Also, what is very painful in that process is the time lag uh, that takes sometimes up to 90 days in certain cases. Um, as proposed to be amended, and I wanna thank the author and his uh, uh, staff for helping work with us and guide us through. I think this bill is actually much better than what we had initially come up with, so thank you for that. Um, as proposed to be amended, AB 374 allows a provider to request a step therapy override. The bill makes step therapy override requests subject to a 72-hour response for non-urgent requests and within uh, 24 hours for urgent circumstances. Additionally, this bill makes step therapy appeals subject to an expedited MIR review process of three days. Um, AB 374 does not prohibit step therapy protocols. Rather, the bill establishes an override request to ensure patients' unique needs uh, are taken into consideration. The use of step therapy can lead to an exacerbation of a patient's condition causing irreversible deterioration or damage uh, to the patient such as limiting daily functions and ability to remain a productive member of the workforce or society. With that, I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank and introduce Peggy Ealing, uh, who is here from my district. She is a patient, as well as Rusty Selix, Mental Health America of California. Uh, and uh, Doug Chiapetta was going to be here, but instead... Carrie Chappie, front of here. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to um, let you know that we are very thankful for all the work that your committee staff has done. Kristen Hare, Arthritis Foundation, is a strong support of the bill and one of the proud sponsors. Um, as Assemblymember Nazarian mentioned, we do have Peggy Ealing here, who um, is a patient, and I'll be here to answer any technical questions you have. Good afternoon. My name is Peggy Ealing, and I am an arthritis patient. Three and a half years ago, I began having sudden severe pain in my hands and wrists that would come and go without warning. After about a year of the on again, off again pain, I realized it wasn't going away on its own. So I saw an orthopedist. But after unremarkable x-rays and six weeks of physical therapy that only made things worse, he recommended a rheumatologist. Blood tests revealed an autoimmune disorder, most likely rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. That was the beginning of two years of try this medication for four weeks and then come see me again. We started small, first one prescription NSAID, then another, then another. I failed them all. Then we added a low dose of Plaquenil, which is a fairly common treatment for both of my possible diagnoses. After six weeks, we increased the dose, then added another drug. So it went for over a year and a half. During this time, the pain increased in my hands and spread to my elbows and feet. It was unpredictable, so I never knew if I would have a good day when I could go about my usual activities, or if I would have to cut bike rides short, ask for help lifting dinner off the stove, or figure out how to use a mouse with my left hand so I could continue to work. Let me be clear, I was lucky to be able to see my rheumatologist every four weeks. Many patients aren't so for fortunate. But even with my frequent visit schedule, the process took nearly two years. The good news is that now I'm on a drug regimen that is working for me. 
We still don't know if I have lupus or RA. They have many symptoms in common, and I don't have any of the symptoms that are unique to either one. But at my last appointment, my doctor said I'm stable on my meds, and I don't have to see him for three months. I still don't have a clear diagnosis, and I still don't know how this is going to go. I hope to remain stable on my current medication for a good long time, but the odds are that my disease will flare again, and my symptoms will return, or new ones will present. I was also lucky that my pain was never incapacitating. There wasn't anything that I flat out couldn't do. I just had to make adjustments, like getting an electric toothbrush. So I didn't put too much stress on my hands and wrists. Not every patient is so fortunate. In the worst cases, irreversible joint damage can occur in just a few months. And when a patient's disease presents more aggressively, they can be wheelchair-bound or bedridden while they and their doctor get to the right medications and the right doses. Even so, for me, doctor visits every three weeks was a huge investment of time and resources, both of which were in short supply over the last three years, as my husband and I sent our oldest two children off to college and a third into high school. Getting to a diagnosis and finding the right combination of medicines to treat autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis is very often a long process. A return of my symptoms or a sudden rash of new ones might begin another long period of step therapy for me. It would be a relief to know that my doctor and I could pursue a conversation with my insurance provider to determine the best progression of medications to help me get back to stable as quickly as possible. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you. Anyone else in support? Rusty Selix, Mental Health America of California. Unfortunately, this type of problem is quite common for people with serious mental illnesses, depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. To get the right medication or combination of medications that works often takes many trials. You only have about a 20% chance of success for schizophrenia with the first dose of the first drug. But if a doctor has unrestricted access to all the medications, you almost always get a successful result. Step therapy is an important problem, and this bill goes a long way to addressing it. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed. Jerry Jeffy, representing the California Chronic Care Coalition. Uh, our membership consists of uh, 30 statewide health care organizations, uh, uh, the patients who have a chronic disease or chronic condition. Nearly every one of those diseases that we have, chronic conditions, they're on uh, using high-cost uh, specialty drugs. And many times there aren't alternatives, but the health plans are looking for ways to save money and use generics. And so people are going through this process time after time of trying to find the right drug. It's very expensive and it's very lengthy and it really causes a lot of problems for people who have chronic diseases in general, particularly MS as an example, or leukemia. So there's several others. So to be able to streamline the process, uh, which this bill does, uh, is very, very beneficial. And finally, uh, we believe this bill provides a good balance between the plans who are looking for ways to contain costs and the patients are looking for ways to get treatment to uh, work on their disease or condition. Thank you. Anyone else in support? Uh, D Doug Schiappetta on behalf of the Union of American Physicians and Dennis, along with the American Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees. As a physician advocate, I've had a personal experience uh, with regard to uh, step therapy. My, my daughter, Gianna, was diagnosed with uh, juvenile uh, arthritis at the age of uh, 14 months. And fortunately, I had a really good uh, pediatrician who was referred to me by uh, our, our colleague, Dr. Pan, and uh, we would have gone through the whole step therapy protocol and it would have been a nightmare. And fortunately for us, our, our pediatrician said, you know what, I got a hunch, I've seen this six months ago. Instead of having you go through Motrin and build up on, this, on the more stronger medications, I'm gonna send you to rheumatoid pediatric specialist in Oakland at Kaiser. Within a week and a half, after uh, an hour and a half of testing, Sadly, we were told that she did have juvenile arthritis. They immediately put her on methotrexate. They added Emeril a short time later. It's now been two years and she hasn't limped anything and we are very blessed. So please support this bill. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anyone else in support? Please state your name and position. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty in support. David Ford on behalf of the ALS Association Golden West Chapter, the Association of Northern California Oncologists and the Medical Oncology Association of Southern California, all in support of the bill. Karen Savage Sunglin on behalf of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of California in support. Mike Montgomery, Congress of California Seniors, we support the bill. Michael Hawkins representing Celgene in support. 
Good afternoon, Brian Warren with the California Pharmacists Association in support. Autumn Ogden with American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network also in support. Alex Hawthorne on behalf of the seven California affiliates of Susan G. Komen for the care and support. Moira Top on behalf of BioCom in support. Latoya Ramsey, National Association of Social Workers, California chapter in support. Chair and member Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. Thank you. Anyone else in support? Opposition? Support? Angela Haywood on behalf of the NAACP in support. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, Nick Luizos on behalf of the California Association of Health Plans um, in opposition to the bill. We do want to acknowledge uh, the uh, uh, significant amendments that are being taken to the bill today, and uh, we thank the author, uh, the, the chair, um, and the sponsors of the bill um, uh, for that. Um, regrettably, we uh, are not able to remove our opposition to the bill um, at this hearing. We're still analyzing the amendments. Um, there are a, a number of concerns um, that my plans have raised initially, at least with the bill. Um, number one, uh, with respect to the standardized uh, form uh, for step therapy overrides, um, you know, our members are still suffering from a little uh, PTSD, if you will, um, uh, with respect to the regulatory process um, that uh, was initiated uh, for the uh, standard prior authorization form. Um, and, uh, you know, there were some unintended consequences there uh, that we're still trying to iron out. And we thank SB uh, 282, uh, the, the chair's bill, to try to fix those problems. Um, my members are also telling me that um, uh, uh, many times a step therapy override um, is folded into the prior authorization system. So separating those out is, uh, uh, um, could be an administrative cost increase for the plans. Um, so the standardized form um, is, an, is an issue initially for my members. Uh, we're, we're also analyzing the independent medical review language that's being added to the bill. This is a new issue. Um, we have some questions as to why um, a denial in this area would trigger an emergency IMR. And so uh, we're going through the process of evaluating what types of issues uh, would qualify for an emergency today. Um, and so we're still struggling through that language. So for those reasons, um, uh, we do maintain our opposition to the bill today. We'd like to continue talking to the author's office um, about the bill as it moves forward um, if it passes committee today. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Morton here today on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce, also in opposition to the measure. Um, you know, one of the key issues that we have going forward now that we've, you know, we're expanding coverage to everybody is to make sure that the coverage that we expand is of quality, that's absolutely critical, but also that it remains affordable. We know an insurance card doesn't guarantee you access, but we also know that if you can't even afford your insurance coverage, uh, then it doesn't matter how affordable your copays are or how much access you might have to a medication if prescribed because you won't ever get to see the doctor. And so for employers and for individuals uh, throughout California, this is really going to be the growing pressure. And step therapy, while it, it is not just about cost, it's also about making sure that you have um, the appropriate medication, trying to avoid side effects, but it also is an important way to make sure we're putting people in the least dangerous drug, the least expensive drug that will effectively treat their condition. And it's one of the few tools left that plans have to help employers and individuals design benefits uh, that meet their health care needs, but also make sure that they can afford their health care. Uh, and so for that reason, we oppose the measure, uh, especially in light of another measure we'll be considering very shortly. <laughs> Stephanie Watkins on behalf of the Association of California Life and Health Insurance Companies. Um, we echo many of the concerns my colleagues have raised. Um, certainly the standardized form concern um, as we went through 866, there were issues that came up. We think that that would probably be a more appropriate form to use versus creating a new and brand new standardized form, that there may be confusion around that specific to just step therapy. And we also do remain concerned that you would be giving preferential and special treatment to step therapy specifically through the IMR process and creating a higher standard um, for step therapy over every other IMR request. So for those reasons, we remain opposed to the bill. Um, we look forward to conversations going forward if the bill does get out of committee. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Chair members, Luis Sanchez with Blue Shield of California. I'd like to align myself uh, with the comments from our trade association cap. Thank you. Thank you. John Caldwell on behalf of the Pharmaceutical Care Management Association, the representatives of the PBMs were also opposed. 
John Winger on behalf of America's Health Insurance Plans and Express Skips, also in opposition. Mr. Chair, members, Mandy Lee on behalf of CVS Health, regrettably in opposition. Julie Broyles here on behalf of the California Association of Joint Powers Authorities and the California Association of Health Underwriters, regrettably in opposition. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions from any of the members? Yes, Senator Nielsen. Mr. Chairman, Assemblyman Nazarian, I, I want to compliment you on your, your work here uh, with this amended language. I think the providers here, the health care uh, folks, have uh, made some good points that caused me some caution. This is an issue that we've been wrestling with for an awfully long time, and I'm kind of curious to see what bills ahead you reference that are flavoring some of your uh, concerns about it today. I know how that business works, and I'd like to understand what those bills are. And I know how former promises get forgotten, et cetera, but maybe that'll be disclosed. Did the point make, though, I want to compliment the chairman and the author, uh, the step therapy override determination, the request form, the request for step therapy override de uh, determination, and that that would be accepted as sufficient. There's some closure to that point, but it doesn't slam the door uh, on the plans. A prescribing provider, then it says the first uh, failed first protocol of the insurer, not, not in the best interest of the patient. That is allowing the physician to make a very important determination based on medical appropriateness, another couple of key words, so you're not being ambiguous. And then that the override determination request moves ahead uh, if the insurer fails to accept. So there's a, there's a burden on them to respond within 72 days or 72, 24 hours if more if it's exiting circumstances. And the, that will be deemed to be granted and it may be yet then appealed. I appreciate all those steps. It seems like you're trying to protect everybody and I think you've made a lot of progress. Today, based on the concerns I've just heard here, I think I'm going to just abstain for now and watch how it develops. Uh, you know, I'll get another shot at this bill. But I will tell you that I, I, I think it is an issue that does need to be addressed. I think that you have addressed it uh, in a positive way, maybe not quite sufficient here, but the plan folks can, can work with you to see where you, you get. But I want to compliment you on making a very valiant uh, attempt at something very complicated and that's been around a long time for us to deal with. Any other comments, questions, Senator Pan? Well, thank you. Um, I want to just express my support for your bill, um, Senator Nazarian. I think it's uh, it's a very important bill, uh, and I, you know, certainly I've had my own experience. I know we've heard from uh, patients and people have experienced with uh, significant chronic conditions. But even as a primary care general pediatrician, um, you know, I've struggled with the fact that uh, suppose I have a child who has allergies. Right, and they have a step therapy protocol that says you have to take Benadryl first. Now the problem with Benadryl is it's kind of sedating, and the kid starts falling asleep in class, right? And then what happens is before we can work our way up to something that actually isn't so sedating, and then the other problem is because they're usually allergic, let's say in the spring because it's hay fever season or something, and maybe one season isn't as bad as another, even though we know that we have this problem, we end up getting back to the place where we have to start all over on the step because it's not like they're on this all the time. They're just on it episodically and depending on the allergy season. And, and, and it's challenging because as a physician, I knew that that was not the right therapy, but I'm actually coverage-wise forced to go and repeat things that we knew were not effective. And when we think about quality of care, it really is about what's the right treatment at the right time you know, what's the most appropriate. And I do wonder, you know, from a cost perspective even, and I appreciate what the plans are saying. I think there are some refinements that the plans have brought up that I think we should really look at. But, you know, when we don't, when we don't have, and sometimes we're still figuring out what the right therapy is, but when we don't have the right therapy, and I understand that what you're trying to do is you're trying to be sure that physicians and other providers who are treat, prescribing treatments are starting, you know, they're not going straight for a brand name most expensive, uh, but at the same time, I would also say is that every time we don't give the right treatment, there's a problem with the treatment and so forth, that's a cost not both to the patient and actually to the plan because we're now having more visits, uh, you know, we're having another appointment, that's another bill, that's another whatever, and I guess if you're capitated, you may not worry as much about it, but I mean, it does create, there's actually more cost to that as well as, of course, the cost of the patient, not just financially, but their symptoms. So uh, I hope we can, you know, I think that the, the 
proposed bill is a, is a good landing place. There's, I think, some refinements we should look at. I think we do want to be sure plans are able to, 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 to nudge people to not to, to, to use the most cost effective. But I think, first of all, I think we all win when we pick, we're able to go straight to the right treatment if we know what that is as fast as possible. And I think that actually is when all of us benefit, both financially and health wise. So uh, I appreciate your leadership, uh, Senator Nazarian. I, I do encourage you to continue to work with the opposition about trying to make refinements. But uh, I, I think this is a very important bill, and I plan I will be voting yes today. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else like to comment? <coughs> bill. Senator Pan moved the bill. You're on a, you're on a roll. <laughs> um, uh, I'd like to just make a couple comments. First of all, I'd like to thank the author and the sponsors for working with our office to make some amendments. Um, I mean, I'm always torn with these types of issues. In the past, I traditionally have not voted for most of the step therapy or, you know, the when we talked about earlier about, you know, the, um, uh, the ep epilepsy bills, etc. And ideally, it would be perfect if Everything was covered, if all medications were unlimited, et cetera. But what I have to look at, and for me, the absolute most important thing is the success of the Affordable Care Act, but more importantly, the success of our health care system. And that, keeping in mind, is the overriding factor still controlling cost. So by removing the provider prevail portion of it, 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 there's kind of those checks and balances. I know there's still a little bit of opposition, but I think but what this does, it kind of, you know, threads the needle where you have kind of that fine balance to allow the patient to still uh, appeal, but it won't be an unlimited type of situation. And I also share some of the frustration that Senator Pan has because many a times when I prescribe certain medications and we'll call the pharmacy and we find out it's not on the formulary. But I understand and realize that's the world I have to deal in and then I have to call back the pharmacy, find out what would work, what's covered by the insurance, mainly it's Medi-Cal. But I think that's the balance that we have to keep to make sure that we can control costs to allow the plans to be able to get the best price, to have controls, uh, et cetera. But I, I am supporting the bill and I appreciate you working with our office in that. So we do have a, would you like to close? Thank you for the close. <laughs> uh, we do have a motion by Senator Pan. Uh, this is item number eight, AB 374, do pass as amended to appropriations. Chair is recommending a support. Call the members, please. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn. Hall. Mitchell. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Roth. Aye. Roth, aye. Wolk. Woke aye. Currently has five. It's enough to get out, but we're still going to place that bill on call. And I think I saw Thank you. dynamic, not trio. What's the word for four? <laughs> What's the word? Fortet. I, the fortet, the dynamic fortet here in the, in, in the audience. I would say four tops, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. Just seems like it was just before lunch that I heard you guys at another committee. Anyway, it's a pleasure to have you here in the Senate Health Committee. Uh, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I am happy that my joint authors and I can present one comprehensive cannabis bill. In 1996, California became the first state in the nation to allow the use of medical cannabis after voters approved Proposition 215. Proposition 215 allows seriously and terminally ill patients to legally use cannabis if and only if they have the approval of a licensed physician. However, California has fallen behind the rest of the nation and failed to implement a comprehensive licensing and regulatory structure to ensure patient access and protect our environment, public safety, and public health. Until such a comprehensive state regulatory scheme is enacted, the medical cannabis industry will continue to be stuck in the middle between inconsistent oversight or regulations at the local level and constant federal 
action despite compliance with local rules. On August 29, 2013, the United States Department of Justice issued a memorandum, the Cole Memo, that updated its guidance to all U.S. attorneys. In light of state ballot initiatives to legalize under state law the possession of small amounts of cannabis and provide for the regulation of cannabis production, processing, and sale. In the Cole Memo, the federal government calls for states that have authorized the sale of cannabis, medical cannabis, to enact a strong and effective regulatory system. Additionally, the memo states, if state enforcement efforts are not sufficiently robust to protect against harm set forth, the federal government may seek to challenge the regulatory structure itself. AB 266 creates a regulatory system that respects the interests of the local government while still providing a consistent statewide structure. The four joint authors came together because this is a very big legislative proposal. And my joint authors and I are very committed to continuing to work with all the stakeholders and on, all, on any issues that are still outstanding. I respectfully ask for your I vote. And with me today is one of our joint authors, uh, Assembly Member Cooley. Mr. Chair and members of the Senate Health Committee, pleasure to be here on behalf of A2, AB 266. This bill takes the approach of a overarching lead agency coordinated with other state agencies in which we have invested tax dollars to grow expertise that will support this enterprise. But the bill is crafted around supporting local control, uh, local control, so many of us come out of local government, this is where quality of life is established. Courts have upheld local control in the area of uh, medical marijuana, and this bill preserves that local control as well. Uh, it protects the ability of local governments to allow or ban medical marijuana cultivation, manufacture, or sale in their jurisdiction. It allows for local zoning and code enforcement in addition to statewide standards for health and safety and security. Uh, a licensed business, if acted out of the scope of its license or acted in an inappropriate manner, uh, under this bill will be subject to being shut down by the local government until that gets sorted out. So it, it is effective, practical, local control. Um, and uh, we see that in this respect, the bill will balance the Compassionate Use Act with the quality of life concerns of local government. The bill has been supported from day one by the California Police Chiefs Association, California League of Cities, many individual cities, and um, with my colleagues, I'm pleased to be here as a part of this collaborative effort. Thank you. Uh, who would like to go next? I'll go ahead and go. Chair and uh, committee members, it is kind of a unique situation that you actually have. Okay, can you hear me better now? I apologize. As I indicated, Chair and, and uh, committee members, it is truly an honor to be here in a rather unique situation. I am a retired a uh, law enforcement professional, a conservative, that's here supporting a cannabis bill. And I'm very proud to be in this position because it's been 19 years that uh, we have voted in the fact that we believe that cannabis treats medical conditions in a very legitimate pathway. However, we know that uh, not everybody chooses to follow the rules in our society. and. Over the last 19 years, there have been a number of abuses, and I believe that this bill reasonably addresses those abuses in a very meaningful, bipartisan, non-objectionable non pathway. You know, the, uh, the complexity of this has required four legislators. Uh, bipartisan partnership has resulted in a very, very well-crafted piece of legislation that I'm proud to be part of. And one of the pieces that brought me to this table was one of the biggest scourges that threatens our, our future society and current society is drug driving. And part of that drug driving are people who are taking medicine in a very uh, legitimate way but don't realize their uh, threat that they pose to the public. And one of the things this bill does is allows us to address this issue in a very uh, meaningful way, and it allows the California Highway Patrol to initiate some studies on how to uh, identify impaired drivers and to show the causational relationship between THC 
and driving. And so I couldn't be more proud to be part of this team, and I hope that you'll see the, uh, the benefit that this legislation brings. And uh, we'll now let Mr. Bonta advocate for this bill. Thank you, Assemblymember Lackey, and thank you, Mr. Chair and Senators, for the opportunity to be here today. And thank you to my fellow joint authors for our, our close work together. And I want to, in particular, thank committee staff for your diligence and patience and flexibility and hard work analyzing this bill. I know it's been a load, and we really appreciate your partnership and are very thankful for your tremendous work in helping us make it a better bill. We've taken some amendments per the suggestion of the Senate Health Committee to address four issues, two related to patient access, one related to residency requirements, and a technical fix on the clarification on the revocation of licenses. Thank you for your assistance uh, with those amendments. AB 266 is about providing patients safe access to medical cannabis. To do that, the bill crafts a broad regulatory structure for the entire life cycle of medical cannabis, covering cultivation, manufacturing, testing, distribution, and dispensing to consumers. AB 266 takes a practical approach to regulation of medical cannabis, applying existing regulatory frameworks to this new industry while adapting to the unique circumstances surrounding medical cannabis. To this end, the bill divides the licensing structure among multiple agencies, including the Department of Food and Agriculture, the Department of Public Health, and the Board of Equalization, each of which has expertise in various industries that have similarities to that of medical cannabis. The licensing requirements also ensure that the applicant has been approved by the local authority to conduct business within the local ordinance related to commercial cannabis activity, a, our so-called dual licensing structure. AB 266 is about making sure that our patients are protected when using and growing medicine that the state has recognized as being beneficial to their health and well-being. There are currently no industry or state standards regarding basic testing and dispensing requirements for this medicine. The patients who are recommended medical cannabis have some of the most devastating diseases we face in our communities, cancer, HIV AIDS, multiple sclerosis, and more. In the absence of basic fundamental correction, uh, protections instilled by the state into the industry, we are asking our patients to take huge gambles with their health. They run the risk of compromising their already vulnerable bodies with molds, pesticides, and other contaminants. They are not guaranteed to receive a medicine of high quality, and they are not guaranteed that they are even receiving the product that their physician recommended. Senators and Mr. Chair, after 19 years of, non of non regulation, our patients deserve to be treated fairly and have their health protected. AB 266 combines the input of stakeholders throughout the state to create what we believe are thoughtful, effective regulations that fit within our existing regulatory frameworks for other products, comply with federal goals, and create a better system for the entire life cycle of medical cannabis. We respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. We're now at this time going to ask for the proponents. We're going to be allowing six minutes, minutes for the proponents, six minutes for the opponents. Anyone after that to only state your name and position. So decide on the proponent side how are you going to divvy up your first six minutes. Um, and we'll start the clock as soon as you end the first person starts speaking. Uh, Senator and members, Tim Cromartie on behalf of the League of California Cities. Uh, we're in strong support of this measure. We'd like to thank each of the authors for linking their names to uh, uh, an effort to tackle a complex set of regulatory challenges for their leadership in that. We'd like to, on behalf of the League, uh, especially thank Assemblymember Cooley for his commitment in making sure that our issues have remained a priority through the various permutations of this bill, and especially for his personal skilled diplomacy in keeping the coalition together as the bill moves forward. Thank you. Good afternoon, Lauren Michaels. On behalf of the California Police Chiefs Association, we're in strong support of this measure, and we'd like to thank all four of the authors for their continuous hard work moving this bill forward. Good afternoon, Sam Rodriguez on behalf of the United Food and Commercial Workers, Western State Council, uh, jurisdiction of California, Arizona, Hawaii, and Nevada. Yesterday, the governor of Hawaii approved a similar measure. Uh, we are very grateful uh, that the authors, Lackey Cooley, Mr. Bonta, Mr. Joan Sawyer, uh, for, for the last 10 months have worked very closely with United Food and Commercial Workers, the only union that represents cannabis workers in the state of California. We urge a strong support for this measure. Thank you. Uh, John Lovell on behalf of the California Association of Code Enforcement Officers, the California College and University Police Chiefs Association. 
We're in support of this bill. We think it's a comprehensive, collaborative effort. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't call out the authors for their hard work and active engagement on this bill. Good afternoon, I'm Don Duncan with Americans for Safe Access, the nation's leading medical cannabis patients advocacy organization and strong support of the bill. Nate Bradley with the California Cannabis Industry Association. We are in strong, um, we are in strong support if a minute on the bill. We're almost there and we're looking forward to working with them. We thank every, all the authors for all their act their active input on this, and uh, we look forward to working with them the rest of the year. Karen Leggett, and I thank the authors for the bill, and I'm for this bill strongly, and I want to say have a good holiday to all the senators and assemblymen I have not had a chance to say, because I know you guys are going to be off. Viviana Becerra, representing the California Cannabis Operators League. Uh, we have officially taken a support if amended position and have been working with the authors on our concerns and hope to continue to work with them specifically on the number of licenses of large re retailers can obtain, the square footages of both the outdoor and indoor facilities, and lastly, the makeup of the task force. Thank you. Nicolo DeLuca here in support on behalf of Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff. We want to thank all the authors and their staff for all the hard work, a very complex matter. Uh, and then in addition, on behalf of the city of San Leandro, support if amended, that we're very optimistic we could work through those issues, and thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, members, Paul Smith with the Rural Counties Association. I want to also echo all the uh, thanks and appreciation to all of the authors and their staff. I know a lot of late nights uh, on this. Uh, this has been a, an incredible uh, process. We traditionally have not supported these types of bills, but the four Principles that are addressed in this bill, a local land use protection, a strict licensure, county taxing authority, and environmental protection are in this bill. For that reason, we have a supportive amended bill. The last few uh, items that we need to address, I think we're going to get there. Uh, they are fine details uh, to address the final concerns of rural counties. Um, encourage this bill to move forward, and hopefully this should be the year um, a licensing bill gets enacted into law. Good afternoon, Karen Keene on behalf of the California State Association of Counties and the Urban Counties Caucus. I would just associate my comments with the Rural County Representative. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marsha Blount, President of the Brownie Mary Democratic Club of Sacramento County. And we would like to support this bill and thank the authors for their responsiveness to our community. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Shane Gussman, on behalf of the Teamsters, we are in support of the bill and, like others, thank the authors and their staff for working so hard with us, getting a strong regulatory framework for this industry. Thank you. Kimberly Cargyle, with a therapeutic alternative, a city of Sacramento regulated and permitted dispensary serving 10,000 patients. Uh, we support with amendments mostly focused on um, trying to figure out some way to prevent bans in California and give patients their right to obtain safe access as stated in Proposition 215. Thank you. Uh, d d <clears throat> On behalf of Emerald Growers Association, Jamie Kerr, supportive amended. Uh, Dale Geringer from California Normal, one of the co-authors of Proposition 215. I want to thank all the authors for working with us on this. Uh, I think we're really getting there. We do have a few technical concerns, especially about the availability uh, via delivery uh, to individual patients, but uh, we uh, support this bill with, with amendments. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Kira Ross on behalf of the cities of Sacramento and the city of Burbank, both in support of the bill and thank the authors for their hard work on this effort. Mr. Chairman, members, Randy Perry with Aaron Reed and Associates on behalf of the 67,000 rank and file peace officers of California, uh, PORAC in support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members, Eduardo Martinez, California Medical Association. We are also in support. I want to thank all the authors, but particularly Mr. Bonta and his staff, wanting, uh, really ensuring that the doctor patient relationship is maintained. Thank you. Okay, opposition. <clears throat> 